Ladies and gentlemen, as it turns out, Hisuian Typhlosion is the truth. I'm convinced, you're about to be convinced. While this thing does look depressed, he is in fact happy when he's whooping that ass. I've got myself a really good match here. I'm trying to get Typhlosion to do as much as possible, and let's jump into it. Alright, so my opponent is going to lead off with their Bronzong as I decide to toss out the Electrode. Mostly because I don't see uh, a ground type on their end that can just take a Volt Switch. And now I can basically grab myself a matchup while also, you know, doing some pretty good damage in the process. Choice Specs, Hisuian, uh, Electrode is actually honestly super fun to play. So, uh, I get the Volt Switch off there with a little bit of chip damage and now I've got a decision to make. Who should I start to get going? I decide... Rather than going on the offensive, I'm actually just going to bring up my balls. Quagsire is a decent matchup here, uh, mostly just because I want to be able to set up some hazards. And this Quagsire does pair uh, with my Hisuian Typhlosion in the form of Toxic Spikes. And you'll see a little bit later on, Typhlosion does have a move that takes advantage of that. Uh, but for now, I mostly just want to be able to get up some Stealth Rock, and I know that this Bronzong, you know, can't really do too much to me. Also important to note, however, I can't do shit to this Bronzong either. My only attacking move is Earthquake on this Quagsire. And that boy is likely levitating over there, unless for some reason this is the first Bronzong in the world carrying Heat Proof. So, uh, that thing actually hits me with a Psychic, and that does a little more than I would like. I mean, obviously I don't have anything uh, in terms of recover, so I do, I do want to be careful with my Quagsire. Because uh, it's kind of my best check to things like their Arcanine, but... Looking at the matchup here, I decide, rather than switching out, I'm going to end up staying in and go for the Toxic Spikes. Again, for the reason that I know that he doesn't have any Poison types that can switch into this and kind of soak him up. Uh, also, it doesn't look like they have much reliable uh, ways of getting rid of Hazard. So, I do get up the Toxic Spike there. I was really considering switching into either Tyranitar or uh, the Galarian Moltres. Turns out he went for the Body Press actually expecting that, so... Me staying in there ends up working out because now I got my spikes up. Quagsire is still looking healthy enough to potentially be able to take on a matchup against an Arcanine later. And now I gotta get my ass out of here because I don't have much to do. So I figure he's not gonna body press twice in a row, right? I'm gonna bring in the Moltres, uh, fully expecting uh, him to go for the Psychic here just to get as much damage on Quagsire as possible. Mercury does come in on some Stealth Rock and it turns out that he actually switches himself out. So. On the double switch, we got ourselves a nice little awkward kind of blind date situation. Two mons come out, say, I don't really know what to expect, and I didn't expect to see you. So, and with this matchup here, I'm kind of worried. I don't really know, I don't have much switch-ins to uh, the High Dragon, so I'm just going to actually end up staying in here, go for the agility. The reason for this is because I know that I can take at least one attack from this thing. I can get my speed up, be able to outspeed, activate my Berserk ability, and be fast, and then do damage. Uh, so he Dragometer does knock me down to 18. I then go for that agility. I'm fast as fuck, boy. Uh, and now I can basically, with the plus one, threaten to try to flinch with Air Slash. Honestly, there's nothing that I can do uh, that can Oko here. But I figure if there's any time to try to get Moltres going, I guess that was kind of the time. It doesn't look great against his team. And I figured, you know what? I'm, I'm fucking, I'm going for it. I'm going to try to just basically poke holes in the team as much as possible. And it turns out the three-headed dragon don't want none. He is going to end up switching into the Forges here, who does take some Stealth Rock. Does take a little bit of that Toxic Spike. But unfortunately, this thing has about 9,000 special defense, so my Air Slash pretty much heals it. And uh, that kind of isn't ideal, as I can, I can basically stay in here, try to go for some flinches. Um, I can potentially switch out and try to get a Rapid Spin to be able to bring in Moltres later. But like I said, it's looking like I'm not fast enough to really threaten enough on their team. And I kind of would just like... The momentum of bringing in a revenge kill here. So I am just going to stay in, go for that air slash again. Always that chance for a flinch. But more importantly, the chip damage is what I'm looking for on this Forges. That thing is an absolute special tank. And with mons like my Hisuian Typhlosion that I would like to get going, I kind of need this thing whittled down. And that is why you can never underestimate the power of chip damage. Um, it really can, it can definitely uh, swing matches. So I have to give up the Moltres for it. Uh, but I'm honestly fine with that because now this thing is easily picked off. Uh, by anything that I've got. So, uh, I decided I'm actually going to end up going into the Electrode. Honestly, Spect's Electrode still looks really nice here. Um, I, I'm thinking if he decides to switch into the High Dragon, that's the only thing that can kind of take attacks from this Round Ass Fool, but uh, a Spect's Thunderbolt is going to do a lot to pretty much anything here. So, uh, I'm going to end up going for that Thunderbolt. I figured they would just kind of sack off the Forges, but ends up actually switching out. Does bring back in uh, young Shrek Dragon here, who... Uh, it does take some Stealth Rock damage, and as you're going to see, even Specs Thunderbolt doesn't do quite enough to this thing. But what it does is paralyzes this man, and that is actually pretty damn solid. I was a Choice Scarf Typhlosion, I'm faster, 
Um, my Tyranitar actually has a good check to this thing anyway, so not a huge para, but hey, we always love to see it, especially when my dude Electrode is out here providing for the family. So, Electrode has no business staying in there and dying to a Draco Meteor, so what I decide to do is bring in Mr. T. I'm thinking, hey, if he gets fully parried, I'm in a good spot to try to Dragon Dance and have some fun, but he's actually just gonna end up dropping the Draco directly on my ass, and... You know, that is never fun. I am able to live it, however, but now I'm looking like I'm in a spot where actually Tyranitar even able to outspeed. I really don't have great coverage against against a High Dragon here. So what I'm going to do is end up going for the Terra Blast. I'm not going to go for the Terra Flying because I know likely a Scizor check is coming in here and I honestly just get off the attack to try to um, put that High Dragon in range for Hisuian Electrode um, or Tyranitar. Basically, both would be able to pick it off. He does end up switching into big meaty claws here, and I go for the, the just like regular ass Terra Blast without the Terra. As now I'm realizing, hey, this Tyranitar moveset actually did not work out in this situation at all. And now I'm looking at a Scizor who can scare the shit out of me with a bullet punch. But I do have the absolute goat. I got tentacles on my neck, and I'm Hisuian Typhlosion ready to make some shit happen. Now I know. That this thing is going to go for that bullet punch, but if it did go for the swords dance, this is also a great switch in for me. It does go for that bullet punch, I am able to take it nicely, and now I'm sitting in a spot where I can absolutely scare the shit out of this thing uh, with the flamethrower. Now, looking at his team, I know that he has the Arcanine in the back, and that thing is pretty much there exactly for this situation. Be able to take attacks, uh, throw in at the scissor, switch in, get flash fire, have a good time and profit. However, I'm gonna expect that switch, go for the Infernal Parade, and this is why we like to set up those Toxic Spikes, because uh, the Arcanine is gonna come in expecting uh, that fire attack. This thing is gonna then get poisoned, and now, looking at the secondary effect of Infernal Parade, doubles in damage when the opponent has a status condition, and I'll tell you what, Infernal Parade is about to rain all over Arcanine's Parade. It does end up knocking that thing out with one hit with that Stealth Rock damage, and that is basically the biggest check to my Hisuian Typhlosion out of the way. Now, Scarf Typhlosion for the rest of this match is actually looking amazingly positioned. Now, the reason for that is because both Arcanine is gone, and also the Florges has taken enough damage to where it's easy to pick off. So, what I do have to do is switch out, because being stuck into Infernal Parade against this uh, High Dragon, I'm not sure what the damage roll is looking like here, so I'm going to end up saving the Typhlosion and I end up switching into Quagsire. Mostly just basically get this thing in to die because what I want to do is get in my Cyclozar. That thing can, you know, just threaten out the uh, High Dragon with the Dragon Claw, get a Rapid Spin off and get rid of those Stealth Rock. And that's kind of what I want to do. Uh, instead, Balls just basically takes an Earth Power and ends up living. So now I'm in an awkward ass situation where, okay, well, I was kind of supposed to die there, but there's not really anything else he can do. I'm just going to Earthquake in case of a switch. Uh, it is actually still faster, even Paralyzed breaks through the Para, and ends up knocking me out uh, with an Earth Power. But I'm feeling confident that I've got myself to a point in this match uh, where I can I can pull this one back. It's not looking great, but with the Typhlosion in the back pocket, anything is possible. So, uh, on the free switch, I bring in the Cyclozars. This thing comes in, I'm feeling like this is a some sort of choice uh, High Dragon, probably Scarf. Uh, so I know he's probably locked into Earth Power, plus my priority at this moment in time is to just get rid of of the Stealth Rock there. The reason for this is because even if Typhlosion switches into Stealth Rock, I would be alive, right? But I put myself in a spot where I die to, um, I die to the Bullet Punch from the Scizor. So I really just need these Stealth Rocks gone. He knows that he's gonna bring in the Bronzong. So for the time being, Stealth Rock is out of the way. That shit is spun with my crazy ass, thick ass tail. And now I'm feeling like I've set myself up for success here. I know that he knows that without Stealth Rock, Typhlosion can take a, a Bullet Punch from that Scizor and Typhlosion is also kind of my win condition here. So what I'm gonna do is go for the U-turn. Gets me a little bit of chip on the Bronzong and also now I need to get in Typhlosion basically before those Stealth Rocks come back because I'll be damned if my fire ghostly ass is gonna die yeah, to a, a bullet punch from a Scizor. So uh, I U-turn right into Krakatoa and this thing is gonna end up going right for that Stealth Rock again. But I come in just a little bit too early. My boots have touched the ground and it's time to just start blasting. So basically, I started blasting. So my dude is running out of answers for the Typhlosion, and I've got myself basically exactly where I need to be, and just enough range to be able to take a priority attack from the Scizor, like I said. So I'm just gonna go for the Flamethrower here. Like I said, I am Choice Scarf, uh, so I actually outspeed everything on the team, and uh, the Stab Flamethrower, that's gonna do a lot, even if it's a neutral attack. So Bronzong obviously goes down. Turn that bitch into 
molten metal. And now, in comes the Hydreigon. This thing does come in for like the eighth time on the Stealth Rock. It's due to seeing better days. The rocks are starting to wear him down, and even a not very effective flamethrower in this range is going to be able to take care of it. And that is why we love to get the chip damage, boys, and also why hazards are pretty much can make or break a game, because once you find your win condition, the chip really makes all the difference. So, Typhlosion's now sitting here with three kills. Got himself a little kill streak going, and we're going to keep it going. So, now we've got ourselves a Hawlucha. Um, I am actually faster, of course, because of the choice scarf. If this thing is scarfed as well, I will lose that speed, but... Um, I'm gonna end up outspeed and go for that flamethrower and that is like a that does like 170% to this thing Down goes the Halucha and there's no answers for the Hisuian Typhlosion This thing with its ghost type is super nice being able to get extra stab But also being able to like be a spin blocker this is a super fun mon to play with and now in comes the scissor dudes down to two more Pokemon um, He does go for the bullet punch here and even with a high roll not gonna be quite enough Thank God I didn't have to come in on stealth rock leaves me with 15 HP and of course the flamethrower Absolutely burnt to a crisp like you forgot the barbecue was on and down goes uh, The claws and now the last Pokemon is gonna be that Florges, um, Who essentially, you know has taken too much damage to To you know kind of do his special defensive ass thing against the Typhlosion So that is basically gonna be the end of the match and Typhlosion absolutely could not have popped off harder And we love ourselves a nice little hyper offense uh, When it when it works. So thank you guys very much for watching I do appreciate all the support. I've been trying to uh, get back into being consistent with videos. So thank you guys very much for your patience. For real, all the support on this is absolutely insane. Every time I upload, I'm like, wow, you guys have truly stuck around forever. And I do really, I love you all. So I will see you guys next time. Peace out.